Hey, what's going on, guys? Coach Bronson here, uh, the No Carb Athlete, and we're, today we're doing my six-week update. Um, it's been six weeks since I stopped my cutting that I was doing with a different protocol, testing out some new stuff, um, and now I'm in a building phase, so I'm trying to add muscle. Let's see how that works uh, without carbs. Uh, before, before I get into the details there, I'm going to drink my coffee. And I'm going to remind you to subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed already, make sure to click the bell so you're notified every time I come out with a new video. But most importantly, if there's any information that you hear in this video, please share it with somebody. The more people we can get information like this out to, the more people we can affect and change the world. All right. Um, the topic for today, I think the title that I put on today, this video is how to gain muscle in a caloric deficit. Because um it's something that i'm doing and i think a lot of people have heard or or it's been slammed into our head so much that in order to build muscle you have to be in a surplus so the idea of being uh overeating because that's what surplus means um versus under eating which that's what deficit means and and how those affect body composition um is kind of what i want to focus on today so the, the the specifics of what I'm doing. Okay, we're going to talk about how to gain muscle in a calorie deficit. So first off, what is a calorie deficit? Traditionally, the method of determining um, how to lose or gain weight is is basically calories, right? Calories in, calories out. If you take in more calories than you expend, then you're going to gain weight. Simple as that, right? That's all it is. Okay, eat less, move more move less, eat more. You want to change how much you weigh, um, which that's really all it is. And all you're worried about is how much you weigh. If you want to say specifically, I want to add muscle, but I don't want to add fat, then you have to split up what's in those calories. And you have to understand how, what you eat, the macronutrients that go into your body, how they affect your body, because they do different things. So that's the basics of my protocol and methodology and how I get people to gain muscle without gaining fat. Okay. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm, I've done this multiple times with myself, um, with varying levels of success, more about lifestyle application than the actual result of losing fat and building muscle. Right. I've done this multiple times. Um, the last time I did this, uh, I was, going through the process before I knew that much about electrolytes. So I was able to get into sub 8% body fat um, without losing muscle mass. And it worked. Like I was super lean. I was still strong. I could still perform and do all the things I wanted to do, but I was exhausted. So now that without, cause I wasn't supplementing with electrolytes. So now what I'm doing, I'm going through the same process I did before. Two things are different, which I've talked about in other videos and we'll talk about again, is I have a much better understanding of my metabolic, uh, sorry, my maximum energy threshold, which I didn't before. So I'm actually eating more fat this time around than I was the last time. The last time I did a super cut, uh, a lean cut, sorry, um, a, a lean bulk, right? Try to add and maintain muscle while cutting. The last time I did that, I was doing a 185 to 200 grams of protein a day. And I was under, under 100 grams of, pro of fat a day, okay? That's part of the reason why I was super exhausted. I wasn't getting in. I didn't have a lot of body fat. I wasn't getting in a lot of fat. And I wasn't doing electrolytes, okay? So the two things I'm doing this time around, again, it's a process of tweaking and making things better. And so far, I'm loving it. I can eat. I feel like I'm eating way more. I don't have any energy issues. I never bonk. I don't get tired. Um, unless I have a, unless I stay up till one o'clock in the morning, that's a whole different discussion. Um, but right now I'm doing 185, about 185 on average, uh, grams of protein a day. And I'm doing about 155 grams of fat a day, right? One, yeah, 185 protein, 155 fat. So, and this week, actually, we're talking about this week's update. I actually averaged about 195 grams of fat this week. Um, and I dropped, I dropped body fat percentage. I gained lean mass, okay? So 
um, with the amount of electrolytes that I take in. So understanding my maximum energy threshold. So I'm getting in more fat. Um, it's a common mistake a lot of people get into, which I may do another video on um, in the effort of losing body fat and cutting back fat. Part of my message is you don't need to add fat to everything. That doesn't translate. It, it's not a direct correlation to you need to cut fat as low as possible. Okay. There is a maximum limit on the amount of fat that you can take before your body starts storing it. I highly recommend you find that. Don't just start at a number and then drop it as low as possible, right? My minimum recommendation for fat for most people is 50 to 70 grams. Minimum. You don't want less than that. Okay. That doesn't mean you just start out, oh, I'm going to start losing body fat. I'm going to go down to 70 grams. Your life is going to be miserable. You're not going to enjoy your food. You're going to be eating lean beef, draining the fat. You're going to be eating egg whites. That's not enjoyable. Part of this process is enjoyment. It needs to be sustainable. Bump your fat up. You should try to get as much fat as possible before your body starts storing it. Okay? Find out what that number is. Anything below that number, you're going to lose body fat. You don't, it doesn't have to be 100 grams below that number. It could be 25 grams below that number. Okay? If you find out your number, I'm at 155 right now. Okay? Um, I'm actually getting it. Like I said, I got in 195 this week and I lost body fat. So based on my activity level and some other things, we'll kind of see I'm probably somewhere in the 165 range, 170 range. Um, as an average, if I just have a normal workout, I don't do anything extra or, and just kind of live my life, right? With a normal routine, I'm probably in the 160 range. Um, so that tells me I can do 145 and be great. That's plenty of fat in my day. That's enjoyment of my food. I don't have to worry about just going with lean cuts. I can do lamb. I can do eggs. I can still do butter and heavy cream. I can still get in the stuff I want to get in, enjoy my food, and not feel like I'm um, doing a traditional bodybuilder program of you know dried chicken and the all the time. Okay, so think about that. Finding your maximum energy threshold is key process to learning how to build muscle while being in a deficit. Okay, the process of being in a deficit. Let's get back to what being in a deficit means. I kind of got sidetracked there. Being in a deficit is all about calculating how many calories you burn in a day and then how many and comparing that to how many calories you eat in a day right so there's two main things that go into calories burned in a day your bmr base metabolic rate which is an estimate it's a calculation nobody knows exactly what it is but we can estimate you can go online you can do a bunch of calorie uh, you can go to a bunch of different calculators online put in your height and your weight and your age and the activity level or sorry, and stuff like that, um, and it will tell you what your BMR is. So your base metabolic rate is essentially how many calories you burn sitting in a chair all day not doing anything, all right? That's number one thing, okay? Um, a better way to do it that I personally like to do is get yourself an in-body at-home device, an HN20, and get on the scale once a week. It will tell you what your estimated BMR is, and it will tell you as it goes up, as it goes, as, as it goes, yeah. As it goes up or down, based on how much lean mass you have, what your body composition is, how you're doing in your progress. Okay. So, my, for instance, my BMR, my base metabolic rate is just under 2000. So, let's just say it's 2000 calories per day on average is what I'm burning. Okay. Um, not counting the things I do in the day, exercise, uh, walking around the house, doing chores, whatever else it may be, going to work, all that kind of stuff. So, when you add that stuff in, all the additional stuff on top of just sitting around all day, that's what we call your total daily energy expenditure, okay? So the amount of energy that I would burn plus my activities through the day is your total daily energy expenditure, all of that combined. So we can estimate there are calculators online. I went to four different calculators and did mine. Okay, so I think my averages were, let me pull it up here. So I would did four different calculators based on the amount of the days that I work out, what types of workouts I do, things like that combined. So my, my TDEE, total daily energy expenditure combined is about 3,100 calories a day. 
okay? 31, 3100, zero, zero, all right? If we look at just this last week, okay, we're not going to talk about the last previous five weeks. We're on the sixth week of my lean bulk, okay? Just this week, I averaged 195 grams of protein, 196 grams of fat, and eight and a half grams of carbs per day. Had a lot more eggs this week than normal. Um, that makes my, makes my average calorie intake around 2,600 calories per day. So my total energy estimated spent per day was 3,100. My total intake for the day, per day, was 2,600. So there's a 500 calorie per day deficit on average this week. 500 calorie total calorie deficit this week, okay? I gained over a pound of muscle. How much did I gain? Let's see. This week I gained, yep, 1.1 pounds of muscle according to my scale, okay? My body weight stayed the same, which means I lost about the same amount of body fat. So eating 500 calories less per day, under traditional methodologies, you go to a generic personal trainer somewhere and they tell you how to lose how to lose weight, they're going to tell you that 3,500 calories equals a pound of weight. So if you lose 500 calories, if you eat in a deficit of 500 calories a day, then you should lose a pound every week. My body weight last week was set 178.6 pounds. My body weight this week was 178.6 pounds. And I ate in a 500 calorie per day deficit. Okay. Calories don't mean squat, guys. Please listen to this and understand that. There is a difference in total calories versus how your body actually utilizes your fuel and the tools and the, the nutrients that you're getting in. Okay. Functional calories and fuel calories. We split up protein and we split it up from fat and carbs. Okay. Your body does not use protein as a fuel. It is primarily used for muscle protein synthesis, functional uh, metabolic repair and recovery and doing things to help your body actually work. Okay. Fat and carbs is where calories in calories out matters. Okay. But what does that mean in general? That means the whole idea of total calories is broken, okay? Because if only 60% to 65% of your total intake of calories per day is fuel and 30 to 40% 30 to 40 of the proteins you take each day is functional, then why are you counting all of it when only 40 to 40% 40 of it is being used for fuel? right? 45, 40 to 45% of the fuel you're eating every day is fuel. Why are you counting that other 30%? It's not fuel. It doesn't make a difference. Okay. This is what enables this whole process of I'm going to support my metabolism, protein, build muscle, recovery, lean mass, and I'm going to fuel my body, fat and carbs and energy management. Okay. Fuel calories in, fuel calories out, okay? Kaiko, C-I-C-O, is an actual thing that makes a difference in body composition, but only if you manage it at the level it needs to be managed, which is using fuel macros as the, your, your mediating factor, okay? So I can increase my fuel, if I increase my fuel over my activity level, then yes, I'm going to gain fat. And by definition, overall weight. But I don't care about overall weight because if I'm also gaining muscle, then that's a whole different discussion. I'm just looking at fat. If I want to reduce my body fat, then I reduce my fuel intake or increase my activity to burn more fuel Okay, so see how this works? Calories in, calories out. Eat less, move more. Move less, eat more. You can manage your, your body composition by your activity and how much fuel you eat outside of protein. Outside of protein, that's the kicker. That is the piece that people miss when they talk about calories in, calories out. 
separate protein from fat and carbs, and you're going to be on a whole different, a whole different ball game, whole different ball of wax. Okay, so that's basically how, okay, how to gain muscle in a caloric deficit. Get all the protein, manage your fuel intake. That's all there is to it, guys. Get all the protein. Do not count your protein calories in your total calorie count. Just count the calories from your fat and fuel, from your fat and carbs. And if you're keeping carbs low, like I am, um, it's going to be mostly fat that you're managing. Okay. But so step number one to gaining muscle in a caloric deficit, eat more protein, do all the things that you need to do to build muscle. There's only three things to build muscle. Get more protein do resistance training, stimulate the muscle, tell it that it needs to grow, get recovery and sleep, give your body time to repair and grow that muscle and then repeat. Okay. And then manage your fuel calories, fuel calories, fat and carbs to keep it below your maximum energy threshold so that you can reduce your body fat. Okay. Remember, it doesn't have to be a hundred grams below your maximum energy threshold. 5 grams, 10 grams, 20 grams, find a balance between eating less fuel and enjoying and being able to sustain your, your diet and enjoy your lifestyle and not feel like you're eating dry crackers all the time, okay, or dry chicken breast. Stay away from chicken, guys. I may do some, actually, I have a talk with Dr. Ballerstedt, the sod father. I don't know if you guys know him. He's a um, agricultural expert. And one of the things we talk about in that talk and interview, it'll be coming out in a few weeks. Um, he talks about, you know, why chicken is not the best source of nutrition, uh, which it's a great talk. Uh, we'll get into that. Ruminants are the way to go, just in case you didn't know. Hey, that rhymed. Um, all right. So that's basically it, guys. To review my information following this methodology, okay, following this methodology, uh, the last week, um, my six week trends. Let's talk about my trends over the last six weeks. So over the last six weeks, following this concept of prioritizing protein, managing fuel. Okay. I'm still trying to find my maximum energy threshold. I think I know where it is. We'll go this week and, and try some things and see what happens. But I think I've kind of, I've got a good idea over the last six weeks. Okay. Of prioritizing protein, managing my fuel and keeping my carbs below 10. Okay. This week was the highest week my carbs have been in the last six weeks at 8.5. Okay. Well, last week I was in like the sixth the week before or four or something. I think the week before that I was six something, right? I get less than 10 grams of carbs per day. Okay. Just keep that in mind. I've added my BMR has gone up 26 calories. My base metabolic rate, the function of my body has improved in a 500 calorie a week, a day deficit. Okay. Keep in mind, not only this week was 500 calories on, on average per day was my deficit. Okay. This is the, this sixth week in the process is the most I have eaten since I started. I've averaged the highest amount of protein per day, the highest amount of fat per day, the highest amount of carbs per day. And I was still in a 500 calorie deficit per day and I still gained muscle, okay? All of the other weeks, I've been at a higher deficit, 700, 800 calories per day deficit to my TDEE, okay? And I've still, over the last six weeks, body weight is the same, BMR has increased, I've gained 2.2 pounds of skeletal muscle, my body fat has gone down 2.7 pounds, my body fat percentage has gone down a percent and a half. Okay. So I'm averaging more than 3,500 calorie deficit per week and I'm building muscle. Show me how to do that, doing a total calories in, total calories out. Um, and then I'll listen to what you've got to say about nutrition and fitness. All right. That's pretty much it, guys. I'll let you know how things go next week and talk to you later.